Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. We're going to be in 1 Chronicles 16. We're going to read a, a beautiful psalm by, by David. So you can turn to your Bibles there while we're getting ready to get into this. So 1 Chronicles I had my place saved just in case, and I lost it here. There we go. First Chronicles 16. Today, I felt prompted by God that we take time to remember all that he's doing. And I found it interesting that we're doing this in a pretty tough time in our world right now, huh? That's exactly when we should be doing this. If we're not careful... The struggles of this world and the troubles of this world can blind us or cloud our ability to see how much God is working. And so to counter that, we're taking time to praise God, and we look forward to giving you some praise reports and stories of what God's doing in and through this church. And I got to tell you, there's so many, I had to cut a lot out, and I'm sharing some, some smaller ones behind the scenes that you wouldn't know about if you weren't on staff here so you can hear how good God is. And I know you have so many things you could share, and we're such a large church that we can't really have like a testimony day where someone comes up and shares a story over and over again. So out in the lobby, we have a camera set up for you to take a moment to share what God has done in your life. We already had quite a few people go to the camera after service in the first service. So please, you know, visit that. It's right here in the middle and share what God has done in your life. And it could be recently, it could be in the past year. We want to hear that. And today we're going to read a psalm that David put together because they were bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. It had been stolen in, in previous time, and they got it back. And in the ark is the presence of God. And so they're excited because God is back in Jerusalem, so to say, right? He's everywhere, but in the ark, he is there. And he, and he is there in Jerusalem, and they're celebrating, and that's what we're getting ready to read. And he wrote a psalm to celebrate it. David was a really good songwriter. And this is what he says. It's on verse 7. So 1 Chronicles 16, verse 7. On that day, David gave to Asaph and his fellow Levites this song of thanksgiving to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Isn't that cool now that the church is around the whole world so we can tell the whole world what he's done? And then we have the internet as well. We can be online telling the world what God has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Just in case you're wondering, why do people sing to God? Why do we do worship? That's it right there. Sing praises to the Lord. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exalt in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. And in the Hebrew, that means to be in his presence. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. I tell you, God works so much that if we don't write things down, we're going to forget. I've had to start writing things down on what God's doing in the past two years because I don't want to forget it. It's amazing. Verse 13, you children of his servant Israel, you descendants of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His justice is seen throughout the land. Remember his covenant forever, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This is the covenant he made with Abraham and the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree and to the people of Israel as a never-ending covenant. And this was the covenant, the promise. I will give you the land of Canaan as your special possession. And he did. He said this when you were few in number, a tiny group of strangers in Canaan. They wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another, yet he did not let anyone oppress them. Isn't that cool? God is a protector. You know, today he's protecting us as well. He warned kings on their behalf, do not touch my chosen people and do not hurt my prophets. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Verse 24, this is the reason why we have a media team. This is why we use the internet. This is why we post things. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Sounds good. Let's do that. 
tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most, most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods or respected or revered. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. That's our God. <clears throat> Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. How many need some strength and some joy today? Well, guess what? That's in his dwelling. That's in his presence. That is free for you in his presence. God willingly gives his joy and strength. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. The nations need to recognize that. It is who he is. One way that we can help the nations recognize it is by we going out and sharing about God as the church around the globe. I thank God for a church that cares about the globe and Delaware at the same time. Praise God for that. I lost my place. Where am I? There we go. 29. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his presence. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken because of him. That's what he's saying there. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let all the nations, tell all the nations the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Have you ever been in a field and you just see how beautiful it is? You know, it's proclaiming the works and the goodness of God. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God, of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations. He's going to do that when he returns. He's going to do that. He's going to do it again. So we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people shouted, Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. God, we praise you and we thank you. This was their song because the presence of God was back in Jerusalem, in the ark. And so they worship and praise daily with this song and, and many other offerings and sacrifices. You know what's amazing in the New Testament? What we find is that God's presence lives where? In us. Sounds like we have a good reason to celebrate on a daily basis that God lives in us through his Holy Spirit. We are the tabernacle. We are the temple of God. We are where God's presence resides in us. How amazing is that? I don't feel worthy at times. You know what I mean? And yet God resides in us. I praise that. Praise God for that. <clears throat> that means he's never far from me. He's always near. And that means I have a lot to thank God for. I've learned something on my journey with God. I've been saved since I was five. I really committed my life when I was 12. Um, and I started really seeking God at the age of 12 more and more. <clears throat> and there's a lot of things I learned. And on the top of my list, I learned something extremely important. God doesn't stop working. We just stop paying attention. We can stop paying attention. We will stop. We won't. Our focus can be so many other places that we'll just not even notice how much God is working. And I've had to stop many times and go, where are, where are my eyes? What have I been giving my ears to? What is, where's my focus? Because this entire time, God's been working. And here I've been worried and concerned about how things are going to work out. And God's like, you don't need to worry about how it's going to work out. I'm already working. Do you know what I'm talking about? God never stops working. We just need to stay focused and keep watching God work. Pay attention because God is moving and working. Today, we're going to take time to celebrate some things. There's some things that may appear small. There's some big stories to share with you, what God's doing through this church. They all matter to us. There's a lot of things that you may not realize is happening behind the scenes that I wanted to share with you. Our first prayer meeting, and we have another one tonight at 6, our first prayer meeting 
we were going to pray for, for healings. And uh, God put on my heart to read James about, you know, if, this, if they're sick in the church, they can ask the elders to come around and anoint them with oil so they can be healed. So I was going to read that, and, and I did. But while I was sitting over here praying before we did the healing, uh, God put on my heart the story of the woman who was bleeding for 12 years. And she did everything she could. She went to doctors. She used all of her money up. She was, she was hopeless. She had one more hope, and it was in Jesus Christ. And she said, if I could just touch the garment, the hem of his garment, just the tip of his garment, I would be healed. Now, there's a large crowd around Jesus, and she, she reaches in and grabs the hem of his garment. And she doesn't know it yet until Jesus says it, but she was healed. And Jesus said, I felt power leave me. And all the disciples are like, well, Savior, you're surrounded by a lot of people running into you, touching you. He's like, no, I felt someone. I felt, I felt someone grab me and, and my hem, and they're healed. The power left me. And this woman was healed instantly by that. Now, when I was praying, I sensed that God was saying, remember the scripture that my train, the, the, the train of my robe fills the temple with his glory. The train of his robe fills the temple with his glory. And God said to me, Ryan, all of you are my temple now. That means the train of my robe is in you too. My power is with you. Go read the scripture. So I read the scripture and I had no idea that there was a lady in the room that night who was struggling to come. She decided to come. She had been seeking for healing, even going to, even asking another pastor who was going to charge her for a healing. And I said, well, that's, that's not even biblical. So don't do that. We'll do it for free. Okay. (laughs) Cause you, we don't charge people for healings. And that conversation um, kind of disappeared, and she came that night. Uh, that was weeks before. She came that night, and God was like practically pushing her to come down to the front, and so she did. And so we anointed all these. There was a lot of a lot of ladies, a lot of women came up for healing, and so we began to put oil on everyone's forehead, and we prayed, God heal all the sicknesses, all the diseases tonight. Well, Wednesday, Cornelius and I, Pastor Cornelius and I, we get an email, and she gave me permission to give her name. Her name is Tanika. She said for over 40 days she had been bleeding, and she was getting ready to go to the doctor, and this was her last hope, her last stop before she visited the doctor. And she came down, and she wrote in the email that her bleeding has stopped ever since. Praise God for that. I checked in with her this past week, and praise God, still no bleeding, no pain. God is good. She told her doctor, I'm good. Isn't that awesome? We had a prayer request come in from our kingdom women for a little girl named Bailey, who's nine years old. She lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she had a lot of health concerns and issues. I want to read to you a little bit about what was going on with her. She had brain swelling, and her skull bone had to be removed. By mid-January, there was some progress, and she was able to communicate, laugh, and move. The doctors were baffled by her progress, but we know that Jehovah Rapha, healer, the great physician intervention, was the answer to the prayers taking place for Bailey. Now, the church had been praying for her, and I got the prayer request. I'd never met her, never seen her. We all just started praying. And since that time, she's had multiple surgeries, In June, she had the skull replaced. During her time of therapy, Bailey told her mom she wanted to ride her scooter, so they even had a video of her riding her scooter in therapy. Many of the intercessors got to know her better through this, and right after this great victory, she had to return to the hospital due to infection, and her skull had to be removed, at which time they made a a medical decision to give her a prosthetic skull. And so they put that in in there, and they they placed it in. And in mid-July, that was put in. She was able to go home and do what was on her heart to be with her two sisters. She's been admitted to the hospital again and again. The beginning of August for fluid building on the, on the brain. This is recently. She had to have a drain placed. And Bailey is home. And we ask that prayer continues for the complete manifestation of her healing. And so can we take a moment to pray for her? 
We're gonna, God's been protecting her. God's been getting her through so many surgeries. We're going to pray for her right now. God, we thank you, Lord. You are a healer. You're Jehovah Rapha. Lord, be in Tulsa, Oklahoma right now and touch little Bailey's head. Touch her skull. Touch her body. Heal her in Jesus' name. We thank you for your faithfulness. You're a good God. Give her complete health, full 100% health. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, through this prayer need, her mom has now joined our Kingdom Women's small group through Zoom and is now being discipled and connected to our church. How cool is that? Isn't that awesome? Why is that important to us? Because we want to reach everyone we possibly can. We do all we do all we can so all may know God's love and follow Jesus. And God's going to use this story to reach so many people. Let me talk about some discipleship things that are happening in our church, helping people grow. We're, we're actually, because of online church, because of what happened with COVID and we went online, we've been ministering to people all the way from California to India, watching every week. How amazing is that? I got a message on Facebook. I want you to hear this because this is why we exist as a church. This is from Austin Price, and he wrote this. Pastor, I felt compelled and pushed to reach out to you. My father is David Price, and with his recent passing, it has pushed me to start seeking the Lord again after I felt as though I have lost my way. As I am back in California, I've been attending Calvary through the virtual services. I wanted to thank you for being a huge help in me finding my way back to the Lord. When the Lord took my father to his everlasting life to rejoice with him, I couldn't help but find myself angry that he was taken from my family and I. I felt confused as to why our prayers weren't answered. I sat down and thought and came to the realization that our prayers were answered as my dad is healed, not struggling, and rejoicing with the Lord. I just wanted to say thank you for helping me with my journey back to the Lord and the church. Isn't that good? God is working even online in California through this church. All glory to God. Here's some numbers that we have. These numbers represent discipleship, so people doing ministry. We have over 400 actively serving in our church, even in the midst of all this going on in our world. That's awesome. 400 members of all ages are involved in some kind of intentional discipleship, whether it's through small groups or programs. So over 400 people in this church are involved in some form of Bible study or spiritual growth that help them get closer to God and help other people get closer to God. That's amazing. That is not something you see statistically in churches. I guess the number 400 is a recurring theme here because just over 400 guests have visited this year so far in the past eight months to this church in person, not including online. We've had 28 water baptisms, 39 salvations, and this isn't including, recently, Pastor John shared a message about Jesus and 15 kids raised their hands to follow Jesus. Isn't that good? God is so good. Our youth group, small groups are growing so much, they've run out of space and they're looking for more group leaders. That's a little plug. <laughs> to help the next generation rise up, to serve God faithfully, to help them grow, discipleship, right? They're growing so much. My wife's group is packed. She has no more room for her age group of girls. So God is good. He's working. Let's talk about some outreach. Margaret Young is part of our food pantry and benevolence, and she always has some really cool stories to share. She received a call from a, a woman named Claire who's, whose mother passed away. And Claire drove from Ohio with her husband, Jeff, to clear out her mother's home to get ready to sell. And they went to several different stores to buy food to eat and to purchase supplies to clean and box up items. And Jeff, the husband, told me that Claire asked every cashier at every store they shopped, where is a good place to donate furniture because they did not want it to be sold. So she goes to one place and they go, do you know Calvary on Route 10? <laughs> then, all right, right, just hold on. <laughs> this is interesting. Hey, they go to the next door and they buy some other stuff. Hey, uh, do you know Calvary on Route 10? That's two. They go to another store, ask the same question. Where should we donate this furniture? Hey, do you know Calvary on Route 10? 
But wait, wait a second. This one's funny. This one made me laugh. They go to the fourth place. They're looking for confirmation. They're just looking for confirmation. Where should I love that? I like how they were looking for confirmation. Hey, uh, we're looking for a place to donate this furniture. Where where should we take it? And this this last person, I don't know who it is yet. They said, "Do you know Pastor Ryan at Calvary Church?" <laughs> That's four times. You know what that means? That's a compliment to you guys. The reputation of God in this community, the reputation of this church, that four different businesses and establishments know about Calvary and the work we're doing for our community. That's God. And all glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We partner with other churches like Crossroads Church in North Dover. And a lady named Vera comes and helps with our food pantry. She's one of our volunteers. And she lives in Owens Manor. And Margaret shared with her that seniors are now our largest demographic for all of our food pantries. And so Margaret gave her 54 food applications to distribute throughout Owens Manor. And of the 54, 47 people came to Calvary to collect food on a day that she set aside just for them. They were so grateful Beginning in September, Calvary will be delivering some produce and miscellaneous items to Owens Manor once a month. Owens Manor is income-based housing, and Vera said that many of the residents struggle to feed themselves, and sadly, many have had their food stamps reduced recently. So just so you know, Calvary's, Calvary has been having to really help our, our seniors in our community, in a 55-plus community, because the, the food stamps have been reduced. They don't get much to help them, and so our church is stepping up to help. So praise God for that. On the same topic of outreach, during our church services, every other week, Ken Ellis and his family, they're part of the G team, the kids ministry, they go to Manchester Square in downtown Dover, or in Dover, they go to Manchester Square and they do church for the kids and the families. So while we're in here doing this right now, they're over there doing that. How cool is that that we have another church in Dover and Manchester Square for kids and families? And they sacrifice so much to be out there. And they've been doing parties for the kids. They've been celebrating moms and dads for Mother's Day, Father's Day. They just did a, a prayer time and pizza party for school. That's you guys being active in the mission even on Sunday during church. Praise God. There's an organization called Helping the Home Front, and this organization helps vets and active military duty families. And a lady named Julia lost her husband, so she's become a widow. He was in the military. And CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network, out of, no, out of nowhere contacted, said, contacted us and said, could you be on the ground to help this family out? And we said, sure. And they said, we want to fix her roof, fix her shed, and her deck. And they said, we're going to send you a check for 12300 Just line up a contractor and make it happen. And then they challenged us to make sure, make sure you connect with her and pray with her and disciple her. And I'm like, well, you picked the right church because that's what we're all about. <laughs> and you know what? That check came in. It cleared. We got a contractor there. He's already begun. And I talked to Julia last night, and she's just praising God. So taking care of our military families. Praise the Lord. A recent Wednesday night, a mom dropped off her two girls to our Calvary Kids program and said she was going to shop for her Air Force wives group that was wanting to provide small toys for children from Afghanistan that were coming through the Dover Air Force Base. And we told her we could help her out and put it on our Facebook page. Within 18 hours, we had so many toys, she could barely fit them into her vehicle. She was overwhelmed by the generosity of our church, and Pastor John wants to say thank you. Thank you, church, for giving to these kids coming through and helping out with this need. This one's funny. A lady drove through our front parking lot last month in honor of her uh, son who had passed away. She wanted to bless a uh, church and a, or an organization with $150 worth of food. She was already at Sam's, and she had driven through three to four church parking lots trying to decide who would receive this donation. And she, uh, her name is Miranda, was very sad but smiled when she told me that she knew she was in the right place because someone took the time to wave to her. 
She drove through our parking lot and one of our members just waved at her. That's all it took. Who would have known kindness is that important, right? Of course we know that. Just one wave. After visiting three to four church parking lots, she said, this is the place. And she donated $150 worth of food to our food pantry so we could give it out. But she, she said, this is what she asked. She said, when are you guys closed? <clears throat> and we told her 5 p.m. She's like, no, no, no. When do you really close? Because you guys are always there all week. Do you ever close? And of course we do, but we're a pretty active church. That's the testimony of you and your faithfulness of serving in this church. Let's give God glory and praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Again, these are behind the scenes things that you may not realize go on. And this is, we haven't even heard all your stories yet of how God's using you in our community. This one's interesting. We have team meetings. I'm going to get into our provision and God's provision financially for this church. I'm sure you have so many stories you could tell as well. So let us know on the camera today. But we, we were in a meeting. We needed, we needed iPads to help us take attendance and for events when we want to register events and any kind of special events come up like the women's one. And so we needed a few iPads and we're in a meeting just talking about it. And we're just trusting God that he'll provide. And I know that God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. And he's all knowing and all hearing. He can hear everything. I just didn't know he was going to divinely provide in that moment. We're in a meeting and we're talking about our need, simple need, just something simple. We could go and purchase if we needed to. We, we try not to if we don't have to, just to be frugal. And so we're just talking about the need for it, and we just kind of set it to the side, and we're going to wait and see how we, if we need it or not. Well, we didn't know that God was communicating this information to one of our members that was not there in the room. One of our members, she was at Christiana Mall going by the Apple store, and while she was walking by the Apple store, God prompted her to go in and purchase the exact amount of iPads that we needed, which was three iPads. She brings them in our office within seven days. And Dorothy and I just said, I was like, did you tell her? I didn't tell her. Did you tell her? No. And she just said, God told me to bring in iPads. If you don't think God will provide, he will provide. And, and church, that's why we're obedient in our giving. Because she was the answer to it, to really a meeting. And a, and a, and a, a vocal out loud prayer as we talked and discussed that. God is good. He will answer someone else's prayer through your, your obedience. Isn't that cool? We were trying to see how we're going to make it through the tornado damage we had last year. As you may know, this, this roof was damaged, our school roof was damaged, over $400,000 worth of damage. That's a lot of money. So if you think I've been on my knees praying, that was definitely a time I'm praying. Now, of course, insurance is going to cover the majority of it or all of it, but you have to have that first in order to get the repairs because reimbursements can take a long time to come in. Do you know that we're still waiting for reimbursements from last August? That's how long it can take through some of this. And we've been on them like crazy. And we have another meeting this week with them. So, but here's the thing. If it wasn't for your faithful giving, we wouldn't have been in a position to fix our building so we could be in service and do our ministry. Your generosity helped us stay uh, in the buildings, getting school back. And because of your faithfulness, we didn't have to use any of our insurance money or wait for it. We kept fixing everything. And we had God, you should have seen God provide money. It was insane. Like we need this amount of money. It came in that week. That's God's faithfulness. Even as we waited patiently for our insurance. Well, our reputation was out there that uh, we could be a place to donate land. And Dr. Rowe was a doctor here for many years. And I had mentioned that he was going to give us land. We didn't have that finalized yet. Well, I have good news. Uh, Dr. Rowe gave us two parcels of land over 1.3 acres for free with no stipulations, valued over $200,000 on Governor's Avenue, right down the road where our church started, which is really cool. That's around the time we're worried and concerned 
not in a too negative way, but just praying, God, provide, you know, and God's like, all right, I'm going to take care of these, the roof and all the, all the repairs from the damage of the storm, but I'm also going to bless you with So this, praise God for that. We did get that. We signed the papers. I just wanted you to know. It was a year of really trusting God for financial provision at the church. It just was. There was a lot going on. And we, had, we were in a meeting because we saw, so while we have needs here, our, our people have needs. You have needs. Our community has needs. And one of the needs we're seeing in our community right now is affordable housing. It's very hard to afford a home if you're a single parent and you have a lower income, or maybe a family in need. Maybe there's emergencies, like a house was burned down. Where do you go to live for a year until that's fixed, you know? Well, we've been praying that God would provide house, or housing and houses so that we as a church can offer transitional living for people in need here in this, in this church body or anyone in our community. And of course, we would help them get on their feet and then get back out there and go find a home and then we use that house again. We're literally just talking about that, praying about that in our meetings here during the week. And God heard us again. Yeah. And we should know better, right? He's always listening. <laughs> well, about a week to two weeks later, one of our own members here says, hey, can I have a meeting with you? I want to do something. And I said, sure. So she comes in, and my mouth drops because she has no idea that we have been talking about this vision for the future of having housing, uh, affordable housing for transitions in people's lives. And she said, I want to write in my will. I'm, I'm working on my will. Now, just, just so you know, we don't want her to pass away or anything like that. <laughs> Okay, I talked to her. We laughed about it. We want her to stay here as long. Jesus should come back first. That's what we want, right? But she was like, I want you to know that I, I need your permission, and I need you guys to be a part of this, but I want to put in our, my will three houses and three properties for the church. Praise the Lord. And God's been telling me that if you... Pray for the vision, because I will do the provision. And that's, that's a vision of ours, to help families in need at the lowest, hardest time in their lives. A roof over your head. We can take that for granted. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people need that. So God is good. And I, again, I reassured her this week, we, we, we want you to be around forever. So stay healthy. She's a good friend. We had 12 children that could attend kids camp who couldn't afford it because of your generosity. That's a week of life change because of your provision. That's over a couple hundred dollars a kid and you provided it. We've been able to increase our giving to missions, to our missionaries because of your faithfulness. You know that we're actually in a healthier place financially as a church than we were before the pandemic. That's God. That's God. Now, we were joking in the first service. That doesn't mean we stop giving. That's the result of you being generous. And the more we're generous, the more we can do for God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. So thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, we were able to put $50,000 so far in the first eight months of this year into the principal of our mortgage to help get our... We want to get out from underneath this mortgage. We've been able to put $50,000 towards our mortgage as well. In the midst of all this going on, all the repairs, everything happening, it's been amazing. So let's talk about the Dream Fund. And beginning this summer, we were raising money for our community center roof where our youth is, our school, Three Stones Church rents it out. And we asked that we would come together this summer and raise $100,000. We didn't get there yet, but here's what we did raise, and we're praising God for it. We raised $44,817. On top of your weekly tithes and offerings, you gave that much extra. 
Some of you even were pulling out from your, your retirement uh, tax um, deductible gifts to us. Thank you for that. Um, that helped us do quite a bit. And we want you to see what we've been able to accomplish so far at the community center, just in case you don't drive by it. So check this video out. Praise God. Thank you so much. It's awesome. We got more news to go along with that. I asked Dorothy to come share this. Yeah, because I've been so excited about yeah. this since July, and I've told you that I've got a good report to share. Well, finally, I get to share that good report. Back in July 7th, one of our parishioners called us and said, I was in my office, and another one of my colleagues came in and said, hey, Senator Benini has uh, some money, a grant that he needs to give to a nonprofit for capital improvement. And right away, our parishioner thought about Calvary Church and our aim and goal to replace the roof at Calvary Community Center. Now, to me, that's God putting a person in the right place at the right time and also bringing back to his mind exactly the need that Calvary had. So he got on the phone with us and let us know all about it, and he said, please reach out to Senator Benini. So I did just that. Very cautiously and gingerly, I sent Senator Benini an email, and in that email I let him know that we had heard this news, was it right? Was it $25,000? Was it a grant? Is there anything that we could do to get this money, you know, as a capital improvement uh, plan? And so he called me the next day and he says, absolutely, there is a grant money available, $25,000, and I will be submitting this, and it has to be in by tomorrow. That was a Thursday. It had to be in by Friday. He says, I'm so excited that to can make this connection with you. He says, Calvary rocks. Aww. That's one of his exact words. That, again, is a testimony to you, friends of your reputation in our community. And we have worked with him in the past and we look forward to working with him, Pastor and I and I, and be able to do further things for our community. Because it's not just about what we can get, but also what we can continue to give and being able to partner with a political leader in our community can make a big difference and he can point us in the right direction. Needless to say, uh, he did submit that on Friday. He had called me and asked all the details about the project, how our community center was being used, and I, we let him know that it's not just about our school, it's not just about our church, but that we rent it out. Other groups rent the facility as well. We have sports teams, et cetera, that use that. And so he was very excited to be able to take this opportunity and pass it forward. And he did just that. Well, that was Friday, July the 9th, all right? I was hoping to hear something by that Friday night about what was going on because he had submitted it. So I waited until Tuesday the next week, and I, call, and I sent him another email, very gingerly, hey friend, here we are, <laughs> any word yet on that opportunity. He says, let me call you, I've been able to do great things for Calvary, so I'm so excited about this. The next day he calls me that morning and he says, Dorothy, I've been able to do great things for Calvary, and he shared with me this amount, and I said, excuse me, will you please say that again? He says, I was not only able to get you $25,000, I got you $100,000. Hey, the project was 102, 
right? That's God. A hundred thousand dollars. Tell me that ain't God. That's God. Right? Praise God. So praise God. Thank you for your faithfulness, church, because we fully believe that because of your um, giving, yep. God's blessing. God's blessing. Yep. So thank you, church. Amen. God blesses obedience. So praise God for that. Well, let me share one more thing. That Go for it. The monies that we had raised that Pastor Ryan just yeah. shared with you, that $44,000, has allowed us to be able to do some additional work yeah. that we would have had to put off. Yep. Um, but that we were able to get it done. So when you go by that building now, it looks like a completely different building. We've been able to paint, and we're going to continue to do some other things. So the praise words. God, and thank you. Yeah, and the words go up this week, I believe. Yeah, oh, yeah the sign goes back yep. up, et cetera. So praise, praise God, God for thank that. You. So thank you. Wow. God is good. God is so good. Why don't we stand together? I'm going to close with a couple of scriptures, and we're going to sing. We're going to praise God for what he's done in our lives, not just in this church. I mean, these are things that are dear to our heart. There's, uh, you know what? Let me tell you something I'm really excited about personally. Uh, on Thursday, I celebrated 15 years of marriage with my beautiful wife, 15 years of marriage. I praise God for that. I pray that today you will, you will take time and you just reflect, and even this week, just reflect on all that God's doing. He is working. He is working. And we need to remember that. Uh, this, is, this is a scripture that is dear to our hearts. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Church, your labor is not in vain. We are making disciples around the world because of the work that's being done here through you, through this team. We're, we're doing this together as a church. So I thank you for that. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 through 11, because your generosity is multiplying. God is multiplying our generosity. It says this, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. You know what that's saying? God is gonna multiply your, your resources, your energy, your finances. When you obey God and you're generous, he multiplies it. That's what we're seeing happen here. That's what we're watching happen, that we get a grant out of nowhere like that. That's God blessing this church to help us in our mission. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That's why we're thanking him today. I want to be careful to do this. God gets all the glory for what you heard today. God gets all the glory. God, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. We thank you, God. You receive all the glory. God, we thank you that it is through your power that we are saved, your grace that we are saved. You have forgiven us. You have redeemed us. We are victors. We're standing in a posture and position of victory because of Jesus Christ. So we praise you today. Lord, we have heard your faithfulness and provision of the finances of this church, our people as well. There's so many testimonies of people saying they're being blessed by you, God. Lord, you have been faithful to heal. Lord, to touch sicknesses and diseases. Lord, you've been faithful to protect and to keep us. You've been good, Lord, and faithful to help us disciple the nations around the world and here in this community. Thank you, God, for the laborers, the givers, the servants, Lord, in this church. God, continue to move in a mighty way. We celebrate you and what you've done in this church and in our lives by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony and our testimony. We overcome. We are overcomers because of you. We give you all the glory and praise. Amen.